Amen. I ask you to stand to join us in the pledge. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll call, please. Durante. Present. Folks. Here. Rappaport. Present. Sharp. Present. Spizak. Yeah. Williams. Here. And Wilson. Present. 7 0, we have a quorum. Approval of minutes. So move. Support. <coughs> Motion by Commissioner Spizak, supported by uh, Commissioner Wilson. Uh, roll call, please. Roll call vote to approve the January 7, 2020 meeting minutes. Durante? Yes. Folks? Yes. Rappaport? Yes. Sharp? Yes. Spizak? <coughs> yes. Williams? Yes. And Wilson? Yes. 7 0, the motion carries. At this time of our meeting, if there's uh, anything you would like to bring before the, the members here that is not on the agenda, this would be the time to do it. If I may have a moment. Yes, sir. Chair, um, I would like to introduce the two new uh, planning commissioners that were just appointed last night. Um, Ruby Richards to my left-hand side and Deanna Adams to my right-hand side. Nice they will join Welcome. us um, at next month's meeting and I will mail the packets and the schedule to both of you. At this time, we'll, uh, we'll move into our first case, which is case 2231, proposed land division at 8332 Hugh. Mr. Ayu. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the subject site here is located in a single family residential neighborhood uh, just south of Joy Road, west of Middle Belt. The site, comprise, uh, the site is zoned R5 single family residential. Uh, previously, a deteriorated home uh, existed on the site. You can see it on the aerial here, uh, but was recently demolished. Um, the petitioner today is proposing to split the property into two equal sized parcels, approximately where the red line is located on your screen, uh, in order to allow for the construction of two new single family homes. The proposed parcels uh, do not comply with the minimum lot width or the minimum lot size requirements in the designated R5 zoning district. Uh, in the zone in the R5 district, uh, parcels are required to have a minimum of 60 feet of frontage and be at, at a minimum of 7,200 square feet in area. The two parcels here are each 5,400 square feet and 40 feet of frontage is available as proposed. <coughs> so there are four variances uh, that are required uh, to approve this by the Zoning Board of Appeals if it passes through Planning Commission and City Council. Um, two of those variances are for each of the two lots for frontage. Um, there's a 20 foot deficiency as I mentioned earlier. And the other two for each individual lot is for the 1800 square foot deficiency as well. In addition, there may or may not be, I can't tell because I don't have a site plan, some additional um, lot coverage, building coverage area variances that may be required uh, in terms of building a, foot, uh, a home with a specific footprint. Um, the administration and the planning department are uh, recommending denial uh, due to various concerns, mainly uh, that this is above and beyond any uh, variance that the zoning board has granted as uh, to accommodate a lot split. Uh, the 20-foot uh, lot width variances are the ones that stood out specifically. Uh, it is obviously known and shown on your screen that there are parcels here that exist on Fremont Street that have a similar arrangement to your parcel to the parcels that are being proposed. However, these have been platted in this way before the city uh, was incorporated and before zoning uh, the zoning ordinance was adopted by the city. Today we have the 60 foot requirement to um, reduce density, but also at the same time encourage some sort of density, but not this type of density because if the entire neighborhood was made up of parcels in this size, it would restrict uh, on-street parking, cause traffic issues, stormwater runoff issues, similar to what could potentially be happening with this concrete that's developed all the way up to the property line. 
There's also an expectation of these current owners on either side of some sort of privacy in building homes and garages and concrete right up to the property line disturbs that. Um, so those are some of the reasons um, the uh, staff and administration are recommending denial of this case. I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Petitioner, would like to come forward and introduce yourself? Hello, my name is, my name is Larry Henney, and I'm representing the builder. I'm a real estate agent for him. Um, and the, the builder is a well-known builder in the area, uh, Suave Homes. And uh, they've been building in, in and around uh, Westland, Livonia, uh, the west side since for, for about 40, 45 years. So it, it's a well-known company. Uh, I believe everybody has a copy of the, uh, of the survey and uh, everyone yeah. has that? Yeah. Okay, good. Then I won't, I won't need to. I apologize because I, I have only, I, <laughs> I only have three copies uh, to hand out. So if you folks wouldn't mind sharing, I, that, would, that would be super. Okay. Great, great. Uh, we already have them. He doesn't need to pass them out. I don't know if we have certificate of survey. This page shows you the plat, and I'm sure you've got a copy of the plat, but it shows you in yellow the number of lots that are 40 foot lots. Mm -hmm. And, and Larry, also the. Doc, Mr. Henny, Mr. Henny, we have all that. You do? You yes, you, you can return to the podium. Okay, I yeah. apologize. I apologize. Right, thank because you. the one that we have is actually an right. aerial shot. There, there are 65 lots within that general area. Oh, right here. Thank you. There are 65 lots within two, two blocks on each side. And altogether, 41 of those lots are 40 footers. Okay. I have also a list of homes in a different city in Birmingham, Michigan, that have 40 foot lots. And in the past 12 months, 50 homes in downtown Birmingham and in the general area of Birmingham have sold that are 40 foot lots or less. We, we really don't need that, sir. Okay. Yeah, we want to focus on Westland. Okay, well, Thank you. I understand. I, I guess my, my question would be why do you want larger lots? Mm -hmm. I know a lot of a lot of folks think that that uh, that that improves the neighborhood having a larger lot as opposed to a smaller one. Uh, but really, it's not the lot that makes the the neighborhood. It's the the homes that are in the neighborhood. We had we had a previous home there that was not up to par, uh, and in fact, it wasn't even uh, able. They weren't even able to rehab it. Uh, the city would have done so if they could have, but it, you know, but in in this case, they, we have a possibility of building two brand new great homes, and obviously, if the builder is able to build two homes on on the same parcel, it cuts down on his cost not only just for the the land cost, but but the building cost is less as well. It costs less money to build. Uh, to dig two holes than it does to build dig one hole, and and so uh, uh, so the, because of that, the builder which should be able to do an excellent job in putting in uh, items that maybe he wouldn't normally put in. For example, this would be a three bedroom home, two and a half bath, fourteen hundred square feet with a basement. 
He would be able to put brick all the way around the house, uh, three-dimensional shingles, and so on. So the quality would be much better than if it was just a single home. Not that he's going to build a shabby home to begin with. Obviously, the city uh, uh, requires uh, inspections and so on. Um, but I do have the products that he built, if I may. We're, we're familiar with, with what he builds. He's been around for a long time. Yes. And now, I, and have you shared the plans with them, sir? So I did, not share the, uh, I did not share the home designs that you sent because they were not in compliance with our zoning ordinance. Additionally, the picture that you're passing out has an attached garage to it, and, and unfortunately, I don't, I don't think you would be able to squeeze that on a 40-foot wide parcel. No, no, it, and it would not have a, an attached. I was, I was just giving you a sample of, of the product that he built, but... Um, but he would be able to put a garage on the property, but it would have to be detached. It would have to be behind the home. Yeah. And here is the plan that he planned on building. Did you have any questions of me? Uh. <coughs> I don't have any questions. I have a statement. Okay. Our city ordinance requires a 60-foot lot. We expect our developers and our builders to comply to our ordinance, not us shake down, be shut down and move to what the developer wants. Mm -hmm. The reason why it's 60-foot lots is because there's a reasonable expectation of privacy. With having a home, two homes built on 40-foot lots, that's only going to give you approximately, oh, no space in between those homes. Mm -hmm. Because it's a six, it, what is it, a 60-foot lot right now? Uh, right no. It's yeah, an 80. 80 foot. So each one of them is going to be 40 foot, which means that the house is going to be approximately how many feet across? That's the reason why we go with the, mm -hmm. the uh, 60 and 80-foot lots, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, second, I believe that this probably would be a, a, a good uh, proposal. The homes, if that one house was built with the garage attached, that would be perfect mm -hmm. for this area. But to try to squeeze two houses in this one small spot, I'd have to deny that too. Therefore, I will be voting yes on the denial. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Any other comments? Yes. And Mr. the reason Brandon. why you see so many 40-foot lots, that was before, yes. before we were a city. Yes, I know that. Okay. So w since then, we've passed ordinances that we were going to have 60-foot lots. So you can't look at these old lots and say, well, there's 40-foot lots there now. Mm -hmm. But we have a new ordinance mm -hmm. since we're a city. I understand. Commissioner Rappaport. Uh, I just had a statement also, also on the lot. If I were a homeowner looking for a nice new home, I would not want to be have another house just right there beside me where I can look in their window mm -hmm. and have no privacy at all. You know, I love the style of the home and everything, but I need a little bit more space in between them. Okay, okay. thank you. Commissioner Rapp report. Thank you. Sir, thank you very much for your uh, for your petition. And I don't think, and I certainly don't want you to think that we don't appreciate the you know, the interest in, in developing and building in Westland. Um, and it's it's very clear, and you've litigated your from your case very very well. Um, it's very clear that you've got a, uh, a decent and reasonable plan to uh, to make a beautiful and well professionally uh, done home. That's not a question at all. The question that we have before us is if, if we can actually responsibly accede to your request. Now, on this particular uh, panel, on this particular commission, I serve also as the, uh, as the liaison to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, which if you've, uh, if you've, if you've noticed in the, uh, the paperwork, you would require the Zoning Board of Appeals to, uh, to sign off on these, uh, <coughs> on these variances even to have the chance of being able to develop. Mm -hmm. um, 
And to be perfectly frank, I, I really don't see how you would actually manage to do that. Uh, have you have you looked into those requirements? Yeah, I'm sorry. Have you looked into the requirements of, uh, of the zoning? Yes, uh, yes, I have. So you're aware that the uh, that you would need to be able to establish that the uh, that mm -hmm. your property, your subject property, mm -hmm. is unique in some way from other properties in the area mm -hmm. that would necessitate the uh, the split that you're talking about. Yes. And how do you plan on getting past that? Because that's a that's not a that's not a thing that we have a whole lot of wiggle room over. That that's actually established by statute. Yeah. The the only the only uh, criteria that, that we're using is the fact that there are so many other lots that in so many other homes in that general area that are forty foot lots. But could you possibly use the uh, use that lot for its intended purpose without the split? Yes. Which means that they would be denied, your request would necessarily be denied in the, uh, in the, uh, in the zoning board. I see. So I, I really don't see how we would be actually doing you a favor if we gave you a, uh, if we gave you a go ahead. Mm -hmm. I understand. So uh, having said that, and if there's no more comments, I do have a motion. Yeah. Thank you. I see none. Go ahead, sir. Uh, at this time, I mm -hmm. move to set case number 2231, Land Division to City Council, with a, re with a recommendation for a denial of the petition due to concerns regarding area deficiencies under the current zoning standards. Support. support. Motion by Commissioner uh, Rappaport, uh, supported by Commissioner Williams. Uh, roll call, please. Uh, roll call vote for case number 2231 to deny. Durante? Yes. Foles? Yes. Brett Report? Yes. Sharp? Yes. Spizak? Yes. Williams? Yes. And Wilson? Yes. Motion carries. But good luck, sir, and as Commissioner Rapport said, you can still build on that lot, but you'll have to build it within the current guidelines yes. of the city right now. But you can build. Yes. yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll move into our next case, which is case 2232, which is a proposed land division at 35701 Central City Parkway. Mr. Ayu. Thank you, Chairman. The subject site here is located north of Warren uh, between Nankin Boulevard and Central City Parkway. This is where we're at right now, City Hall offices, where my cursor is on the screen. Uh, it is the location of fire station number one. The site currently comprises of about 7.3 acres and is zoned CB3, that's our general commercial business district. Uh, the city, uh, if I didn't mention it, the city is a property owner and the city is proposing to split the city owned property into two parcels uh, as noted in the surveys and on your screen. Uh, the approximate split line is here noted uh, or, or outlined in red. The request is being made as a result of a strategy to inventory and prep all city-owned land that is determined to have potential for development um, by our Economic Development Department and Planning Office as well. The proposed parcels are compatible with the intent of the CB3 district uh, and will comply with all of the minimum lot width uh, and bulk standards list listed and required uh, in our zoning ordinance for the CB3 district. So different than the other case, this will not require any variances. Uh, additionally, no setback encroachments or lot coverage deficiencies will result uh, from the proposed land division. So this fire station will still comply with all the zoning regulations even though it's losing a portion of its land uh, if approved. Uh, the resulting parcels are noted in your uh, backup as well. There was an error uh, in, in uh, Units of measurement made 389.77 acres is supposed to be linear feet of frontage along an ink in there uh, under the bullet points at the bottom of the page. Uh, the administration and planning department are recommending uh, approval of this petition being made by the city. Thank you. Thank you. Comments from the commission? Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Wilson. I'll jump in there right quick. 
This is the property by the uh, fire station, correct? That is correct. Here's the fire station right here. Yep. Mm -hmm. And this is part going to be part of the shop and dine district for future development, correct? That's correct. It is, it is part of the shop and dine district. I don't have a problem with it. If there's no questions or other comments, I'm prepared to make a motion. Yes, Go ahead. please do. Okay. I'm prepared to send case 2232, <clears throat> proposed land division to the city council with a recommendation of approval. Support. Support. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Wilson, uh, supported by uh, <clears throat> most everybody. <laughs> Commissioner Falls, roll call, please. Uh, roll call vote to approve uh, petition 2232. Durante? Yes. Folks? Yes. Uh, Rappaport? Yes. Sharp? Yes. Spizak? Yes. Williams? Yes. And Wilson? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Or 7 0, the motion carries. It, this time from the commission, we'd like to uh, welcome our two new members. Looking for you to uh, fill in some of these chairs up here. And also to uh, congratulate Commissioner Folks on her reappointment to the commission. Thank you. Yes. I certainly enjoy being on the commission. Mr. Ayub, do you have anything else? No, thank you, sir. Uh, no comments? Motion is in order? So moved. So moved. Support. Motion by Commissioner Spizak, supported by Commissioner Williams. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Yes. It's an honor.